Fear not, Scranton. This is Pastor Elliot Cook here to share with you a little bit more about witnessing. Uh, we're in the series on, on the five spiritual disciplines, five, right? Uh, the Bible, prayer, fellowship, witnessing. The last one's next week. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the gifts that we've received from God and how we can use them to build others up and to help build his church. That's a hint. Uh, anyway, today we're still talking about witnessing. And I have a, a verse for you. And it's so important for you to know and understand uh, that Jesus saved us for a reason. You know, when he saved us and, and we became Christians, we could, we could go to heaven and be with him forever, right? But he leaves us here on this earth to live out our lives, yes. But life sometimes isn't so pleasant. Why does he have us here? I've heard many people say, why am I still here? You know, the old people in nursing homes sometimes are waiting to die. Well, God has them there for a reason. They're still serving a purpose. And that purpose is to serve our Lord, to love him and to love others and to share the reason why we have this hope within us, to share the good news of the gospel, to have a witness, to be a witness and to share our testimony with anyone who will hear. Hey, um, there's a verse I'd like to take you to. It's found in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Jesus is speaking. Well, actually, let me start in verse 18. Uh, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon uh, called Peter and his brother Andrew, and they were casting nets into the lake, uh, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Now, it's quite possible that Jesus had met them previously and, and uh, they knew Jesus. And, and so it was much easier to recognize him. And they had in their hearts and minds to be his disciples and to follow him. He may have said, I'll come back uh, this spring when I'm ready and, and collect you to myself. But it doesn't matter because the important words here are, uh, when Jesus says, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Um, I don't know. I was never good at fishing. I grew up on a river, had a canoe, went fishing, never caught much. I just caught the sunnies, the uh, very rarely a fish. And my friends were much better at fishing than I was. I was never a fisherman. But, uh, Peter and Andrew were professional fishermen, and Jesus was going to teach them a new trade, and it was to fish for men. They would become uh, the foundation of the church, and they would go out and share the gospel uh, and spread the news and build the church um, when Jesus was taken away. Uh, how do you fish for men? How do you make disciples? Well, just as in fishing, there's a certain amount of, of preparation that has to be done. We spoke of this yesterday, the importance of, of uh, baiting a hook and how to, to prepare, have the right tackle, know the weather condition, know the fish that you're fishing for, uh, what depth they're at, what temperature, when they feed, what they like to eat, and then it's either flies for the trout or worm for a bass or whatever, and you set your you know, depth and, and you might have a floater, a bobber, and wh however you fish, there's different types of fishing because you're fishing for different types of fish. Well, when you're witnessing and sharing your faith with somebody who's a relative or uh, somebody of the opposite sex or somebody younger than yourself or somebody older than yourself, all these things need to be taken into consideration. You know, Jesus said to to uh, Peter and Andrew here in this passage, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He had uh, perhaps already revealed himself to them. Uh, they believed that he was the Messiah already. Now they're growing up in their faith. Now he's taking them to the next level. That's where I'm taking you, dear Christian. If you've become a Christian because of these messages um, over the last few months, You've come to Christ. You're a baby in Christ. There's so much more growth that you need to do. You want to become mature. You want to receive the full blessings that God has for you. Well, uh, you need to learn to witness. And uh, Jesus took them off uh, for a, a crash, crash course on witnessing. And he taught them how to fish for, for people instead of 
literally fish. And it takes a, a different mindset, and it takes, it takes a, a lot of cultivation, a lot of prayer. He taught them the importance of prayer. Jesus, uh, before and after, uh, ministry experiences, oftentimes spends the whole night in prayer. Um, very, very important times in his life, ministry times. He's spending his time in prayer. If you want to have a witness, you got to have a prayer life. What did I say? Five things are important, and they're all important. You can't miss one of them. The Word of God is important if you're going to witness. Fellowship, getting, getting help, getting others to pray for you as you seek to witness, or bringing others with you to help you share your faith and help you witness. Uh, you know, they're all interconnected. If you want to grow in Christ, you have to... Um, abide by this principle that there are five spiritual disciplines and I'm sharing them with you uh, these last few weeks and and one more week to go um, I, I gave you a hint yesterday what the last one's gonna be it's it's a ministry it's serving others and we'll be discussing that starting Monday but witnessing it's so important for you to take advantage of the opportunity to learn from Jesus himself why not start in Matthew and start right here in, in Matthew uh, chapter 1, and, and, and read what happens after Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Watch and see how Jesus acts and behaves and what they're learning from him. And then read in Acts how the disciples uh, put it into practice, what they learned about fishing from men, how the church grew. Uh, some great, great stories in the Gospels and in the book of Acts. If, if you're new to this whole thing and witnessing, I encourage you to go there, to start there. Uh, you'll find some, some good principles that you can put into practice and become a better evangelist. That's what we call somebody who shares good news. It's literally evangel. One who has good news is sent with good news and shares good news. And I just pray that you'll learn uh, to share the reason why you have the hope within you. But to do it with gentleness and respect. Sometimes we get a little excited and you have to tamp it down. You have to calm down and be careful. That's a person with feelings and um, certain understandings that their history their their background is different from yours and and they're not going to believe or understand the same way that you do and you're not trying to make them carbon copies of yourself you're trying to introduce them to Jesus that's the important part of witnessing let the holy spirit convict let Jesus transform them let Jesus teach them simply introduce them to Christ the one who died on the cross for their sins Hey, it's that simple, it's that easy. If you have the need for salvation, if you have the need for forgiveness, I'm going to pray a prayer. You can pray it too. It's simple. It goes like this. Lord God, I'm a sinner in need of forgiveness. I do believe that Jesus died for me. Forgive my sin. Come into my life. From this point on, I am yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's all it takes is a prayer something like that. And if you are genuine and truly mean it, then Christ comes into your life, into your heart, and uh, transforms you. And uh, it happens every time. When it's genuine and real, you can't keep it to yourself. You have to share with others. You know, the real Christian, I don't have to, to tell you you have to be a witness. You, you can't wait to witness. It's one of your thrills, too. And if you are a Christian and you're intimidated by it all, we need to talk. We need to talk because uh, the Holy Spirit will give you boldness. He doesn't give us a spirit of timidity uh, where we're timid and shy. Instead, he gives us a, a sound mind and, and uh, a boldness, a holy boldness to do which is difficult for us normally. Anyway, um, I pray that uh, you have a blessed day, and remember, Scranton, to fear not. Uh, God is with us. He loves us. God bless. Have a good day.